from day one when they get in my class, well, I think one of the first things I tell them is I'm about to tell you guys a lot of words. Don't pay attention to the words I'm telling you. Pay attention to how I'm telling you. The yes. Mm. This is Stay Paid, the marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration, and discover proven real-world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike, along with Luke Acri. And before we introduce our guest today, we'd love if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're not already subscribed, and while you're there, drop us a review. We will read it here on our show. Our guest today, this is a special one. We got our an very own, yeah, in person interview number one, but number two, our very own talent development specialist, Alex Nori. Hey guys. Is here in the studio with us today to talk about training, right? Sales yeah. training. Sales training, creating sales assassins. Sales, sales assassins. I didn't know your we title do. was. Uh, Talent development. Did you know your title? I didn't, I didn't know that was my title <laughs> this, is, this shows you that our company doesn't care about titles trainer. at all. Yeah, yeah. I thought um, it was sales trainer, but I like that. Uh, you know, talent development specialist. That's fantastic. that's what team that's said. That's yeah, there you <laughs> go. Exactly. Teams knows all. Well, guys, you can tell we're super organized here. No, I'm super excited to have you on. Um, I think your story is incredible. Um, no background in sales. Nope. You know, came work for really? our company and. I didn't know that. Just yeah. freaking crushed it. Um, how long uh, were you on the phones with us before we moved you into being a team lead? Like five and a half months. Yeah, five and a half. So it's crazy. And you hold like a record for number of sales in like short period of time. Uh, or did you get beat now? Have I don't have someone better? No, I, d I never hit the record for most sales in the first 90 days. I think that was... That was Reagan. She's Reagan. Got like oh yeah, Reagan. Yeah, insane. yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, but I do have the dial record, which I hope no one ever beats. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for their sake, for their sanity. Well, well, maybe we'll talk about dials today because I think that's one of the things that people struggle with is yeah. um, effort versus skill. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about that a little bit. But um, what was interesting about you is your background was military, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you come to us out of the military. Um, you crush it on the phones. We immediately see a gifting in you for sales and not only that, but leadership. We put you in as a team lead. You quickly become our best team lead. Um, and we see something really unique in you is your ability to inspire people yeah. and pull the best out of people. I don't know if you agree with this or not. I have, over my years of doing this now, and we've tried everything, it feels like, to try to select the greatest salespeople and train the greatest salespeople. And it's like, I've gone back and forth on what makes a great salesperson. And the number one thing I keep coming back to is heart. Mm. Maybe you call it hunger, passion. Maybe you refer to it. It's like, and the hardest part about that is you, it's it, almost impossible to determine on an interview. <laughs> yeah. It is almost impossible, but you have a ton of heart. What, would you agree with that or not? Well, like in your that I have his, a ton of heart? Well, not that you have a ton of heart because I think we know that, but like that you see that in the people who make it in your classes or no? Yeah, it, um, it's funny you bring that up because, like, I mean, I get a new class every 30 days. And it's almost, I mean, it's almost instant when you, because you're right, you can't tell it on an interview because you're getting the version of somebody that they want you to see, their best version of themselves. They want to be, the you know, the best version they can on the interview. And they're, they're never going to really show you their, their, how they deal with hardship on the interview. Um, you can ask them about it all you want, but one of the most nerve wracking things for somebody is their first day of a new job, mm -hmm. especially if they're sitting with somebody like they don't meet me in the interview process. They just hear my voice and I beat them up on the yeah, phone. Cause you do um, explain what you do to kind of test Basically, people. So like if we, if we have somebody that we think is going to be a fit here, the last thing that they'll do is they'll call me up and just do like a, like a fake script read, um, just to see, you know, so if, they have to pitch you to they make have to it pitch on. Me, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and They've never like seen my face or anything, so I mean, like, I feel like if I'm in their shoes, I've, I felt very intimidated my first day when it was just you know my class and and Campy was sitting there. He was the sales director at the time, I believe. Yeah, um, he was still doing the training, and it's almost instantaneous. Like when someone walks in the door day one, within the first, I mean, twenty minutes, I can tell if they at least have the heart, as you're saying, to do yeah. this job, right? There's other things like, do they, you know, are they it's able to crazy. talk to people properly and stuff like that? But the number one thing, yeah, it always comes back to the heart. And you can tell that very quickly with somebody when they're nervous. It's, it, it truly is wild. Like, um, like you can feel people's energy. I often yeah. say, you know, the people that just, you go, yeah, that, that person has something special. Yeah. And you know, the people that you're like, I got to get away from this <laughs> person. And Cody Sanchez, I don't know if you follow her on Instagram or not, but she put out, and I mentioned this on another podcast, but it just blew my mind that she put out this um, a study of, it was like 10,000 hours, a bunch of different companies, and they measured the success of people 
that sat next to what they called a oh, red yeah. pill and a blue pill. Mm. And the red pill, I think, was the negative person. Okay. And what happened to that person's performance, so if you're a negative person, I'm sitting next to you right now, they, they measured the effect of 10,000 hours of me sitting next to you. And my performance went down like 30-something percent. That's ridiculous. And if I sit, uh, or sorry, 21%. And if I sit next to a positive person, my performance went up like 30 percent mm-hmm. and it's like that Makes effect sense. and so yeah. you know getting to our point of like the heart of somebody the energy of somebody it is incredibly important like i used to try to look to hire for skill now i try to look to hire for heart like that's truly like the the shift i've made yeah i uh camp says it to every new class it's uh hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work you know what i'm saying like you can get somebody with absolutely no i mean myself for example, no sales experience i had i'd never sold anything to anybody um, but I was going to outwork everybody and I feel like that's going to pay off every time. Yep. And yet you outworked everybody. You brought the energy. Talk about, um, because you do a lot of training, you yeah. see a lot of salespeople. Yes. What do you look for besides heart and great salespeople? How do you train them? How do you bring the best out of them? Um, well, I think that starts with how to train somebody. Um, I think the thing that I've noticed the most over, I think I've been doing this, I mean, just over a year now, um, I've been doing the training and it, it often comes back to learning how to train somebody because the thing I struggled with most starting was trying to train every single person the exact same way, which you want the training to be the same, right? You want the training to be structured. You want to have processes in place, you know, different tests that everybody's taking, but taking the first couple days of working with somebody to learn what kind of learner they are. Are they a visual learner? Are they an audio learner? Are they a kinetic learner? Like, how do you learn? Because if, if I just train everybody with a PowerPoint, 25% 25% of the class is going to know what I'm talking about. The other mm-hmm. 75% is checked out, not because they don't want to pay attention, not because they're being disrespectful, but because their brain doesn't learn that way. Um, I'm a very hands-on learner. You could lecture me for six hours about sales techniques and, and how to sell somebody something and put me on the phone and I'd never learn anything. But the second I get on the phone and start falling on my face, so to speak, and, and learning it, I'll, I'll learn quickly. So the first step to me w- w- is always like if, if you're going to – train somebody if you're going to to I mean even lead somebody like figure out how they learn take the moment to actually figure out how how your how your employee learns how your how your training learns because that's going to go a lot further for you just being able to communicate with them properly um and then the second thing I look for is is actually just like maybe call it EQ or maybe call it social awareness but it, it's it's watching somebody almost pay attention to their surroundings hmm. Hmm. As, as weird as that to say, like when I'm, when I'm lecturing at this point, like I've, I've done the, the, the first, you know, six, seven days of training so many times now, like I, I could tell you right now, every word that I say and go through every module, right. That that's, that's, that's uh, second nature to me. What's, what's nice for that is I can pay attention to them while I'm lecturing. Like oftentimes I'll, you know, I'll share my screen, I'll put the PowerPoint up and I'll actually open them up in a gallery because it's all on on the computer now, right? But I'll have my screen as them, as like I am lecturing to a crowd. One, it helps me. Yeah. It, me staring at the PowerPoint lecturing, I'm not going to get any energy. I need to see people's reactions, see people understanding it. Because if I see people, oh my God, yeah, yeah you know, like, I, okay, I'm training it properly. They know what I'm saying. But I actually pay attention to how they pay attention to me mm-hmm. almost. Um, and it's very, I mean, very quick. Like I'll be doing my first lecture and someone's already texting on their phone. And I've not even had a conversation with this person. It's like, they, they won't make it. Yeah. They won't, they don't care enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it's super important. I think, um, especially in a virtual world, like right now, it's uh, being observant. I've, I've called uh, one of my managers before and I've been like, hey, did you notice on that call? You know, here's where this person's at. Like, I, you can just tell by looking at them based on their responses, based on yep. their their demeanor in the meeting, uh, based on how they're sitting, their posture. And I said, hey, there's here's where they're at. You need to follow up with them. And like, how did you know that? I was like, we well, just got to watch. Like, you have to watch people and be willing, be able to pick up on those different types of cues. And then do the do what you would do from what you're talking about, like the way that you're either training, you're changing your training method, or you're going to go in there mm-hmm. and help coach them one-on-one. Get in there and kind of make sure you use that information to follow up with them and kind of, you know, find out what is going on. Because yeah. what do they say? Only 7% of communication is words, I think is what it's, they say. Yeah, everything else is, uh, is visual yeah. or nonverbal. Like, yeah. yeah, like you know, inflection, stuff like that. Um, it's interesting because I tie that to an interview process. We look for energy as mm-hmm. one of the main things. Yeah. And how I determine energy a lot of times is active listening. 
which is what you're referring yeah. to, is like, is the person engaged? Are they involved? And do they understand how their actions affect others? Because in sales, I think that is insanely critical. You yeah. almost have to feel, and we do telesales mostly, <laughs> right? So it is like you're almost listening for the nuance of the sound of their voice and how they respond and how fast they respond to in their pacing to understand how this person is feeling that, oh, I said this word. And or I call them out of the blue and they're feeling annoyed or they're feeling excited or they're feeling um, like they're confused. Like you almost have to sense that just even from the language and the the way they're talking. And so I think for us, like what's really difficult to teach is that art of active listening. Mm -hmm. How do you go about sharing with people how to get better EQ? Yeah, that's a. Excellent question. Um, because it's something I think of everything that I train teaching people EQ is, is like, I don't know, my mountain right now. Yep. Like it's, it's, um, you either have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you can, if you can teach somebody EQ, I think that's, I mean, I think that's an incredible skill for me. It's, um, being constant and repetitive about explaining I mean from day one when they get in my class well I think one of the first things I tell them is I'm about to tell you guys a lot of words don't pay attention to the words I'm telling you pay attention to how I'm telling you the yes words. Mm. because when I get excited about something when I start getting because I mean you, you've both seen me train mm -hmm. I'm I'll jump on top of the you're table very uh, <laughs> demure yeah you're, very you're laid, yeah, back, laid back, back. <laughs> yeah, very laid back um I, I'll get into it and I tell them like guys if I get into it it's probably because it's important yeah. like if I'm if I'm screaming about objections pay attention, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm, okay, maybe a little more laid back, we're talking about like, you know, repeating functions of the CRM or something like that. Yes, it's important to know, but like the, the things that you get passionate about, that'll translate to the phone as well, right? So it's being repetitive and telling them, hey, don't pay attention to the words I'm saying, pay attention to how I'm saying it. And then also when we get on the phones, it's hey, don't, don't pay attention to what your prospect is saying. I don't care if they're saying, you know, um, I, I'm fine. I do more. I do my marketing already. Well, there's a difference if they say I'm fine. I'm doing my marketing already. And oh yeah, I think yeah, I'm totally fine. I'm doing my marketing already. Yeah. Like one of those people I can talk to, one of those people I can't talk to. Hmm. Um, but they said the exact same word. So for me, I found the the most, at least for for telesales, the the most effective way to teach people EQ is I actually have a, a call bank of bad phone calls. And I play the calls and I don't, I, I try not to feed my students a lot. I try to um, have, it's called Socratic method of teaching, right? Okay. Obviously Socrates made it up, but basically it was the teacher sat there and gave a topic and let the students teach each other. And then you would guide the conversation as opposed to just like lecturing somebody. Um, so I'll play a bad call and I'll just go, yeah, why is that a bad call? And at the beginning of the class, it's like people are nervous to answer. They don't know if they're right. It, but, but I mean, by day three or four, I'll play a call. You know, I'm teaching on um, the intro brush up, for example. So you call somebody up and immediately they're like, I don't want to talk to you. Right. I'll, I'll play calls where people do it incorrectly. And you can almost hear the prospect start lying to you just to get off the phone. And you, you'll see people's light bulbs start going off. And I'll go, oh, what's wrong with the call? And someone, they're just lying. Okay, how did you know that? sound of their voice exactly yeah. right if you just listen to someone's words you'll never actually understand them but if you understand or if you listen to how someone delivers their words you, you'll understand the type of person that they are that's so good and i think that's a golden nugget for everybody listening to this if you are teaching someone how to sell or really how to do anything yeah. is you've got to get them to tell you what the issue is. Mm -hmm. You got to get them to do the problem, just like you would have them do the math problem for their homework. You've got to listen to the call, pause it and go dissect that for me. Mm. What happened there? Mm. Because that's the only way they internalize. And just a point on that, one of the most, if you are like a sales trainer, if you're, you're, you're in sales and, and you're leading people and you do that type of training, right? You play them their call back and you stop and you go, Ooh, what's wrong? If, if you do that a lot, and that caller is telling you, but I didn't hear anything wrong. There's nothing wrong. That that tells you all you need to know, <laughs> right? So, it, and, and even in just the way they deliver that, if they go in, if they go, no, I don't think anything's wrong. And it's super confident and they're super proud. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm glad you're confident. But if, if you don't understand you missing out on the social cues of, act, of active listening and listening to somebody, I mean, that's huge in sales. Yeah, well, we have this process that we always talk about uh, called memorize, right? Internalize, personalize. Yep. And it, it basically is the process for what we take people through for the script is they need to memorize it. They didn't need to internalize it. Why are they saying what they're saying? And then they need to personalize it and make it their own. Mm -hmm. But the internalization is probably one of the, the most important parts 
because it's about understanding the essence. Yeah. And I was just on, I don't know if you were on this uh, meeting or not. I was on with all the team leads and I was uh, explaining and reminding them. Um, and it's a key thing that people need to understand about all the business, but truly in training salespeople is what you are really getting at with the EQ and with the how people speak is the essence yeah. of what you're trying to deliver. Because if you can understand the essence, i.e. the goal, then you can actually move people to that goal in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of ways up the mountain. Yeah. And if you try to trap yourself in just one way or try to trap people into one way, you're not going to have a lot of success in training a multitude of people because you already said people learn differently. They're different personalities, all this stuff. And I gave them the example of the speed limit. Mm. which is, you know, the cop doesn't pull you over for going 37 in a 35 mile per hour zone. Why? You technically broke the law. So technically you broke the law. You should be pulled over. You should be given a ticket. Why does the cop not pull you over? Because in, in a court of law, it's not about the technicality of the law. It's about the spirit of the law. Right. It's about the essence of the law. Why did they make this law? They made the law because they don't want people driving recklessly to endanger themselves and to endanger others. So when the cop sees you going 37 to 35, they don't pull you over even though you're technically wrong because you're still fulfilling the essence of the law, yeah. you're the spirit of the law. The same applies in sales. Whether this person says this word or that word doesn't really matter. Did they get the essence across of the purpose of why they are saying the intro or why they're delivering the value prop or whatever piece of the, the call you're coaching them on? And I think where a lot of people fail is they go and they pull these scripts, whether it's a script that we've made or Tom Ferry made or whoever, right? If you're in real estate and they recite the scripts word for word and everybody knows reading a script is bad, but they don't know how to get through reading a script. Mm -hmm. They just memorize. And it's like, no, no, no. You got to memorize, but you got to understand the essence of why you are saying what you're saying. Because that is what makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. And that has been our big breakthrough here at Reminder Media is trying to teach essence versus trying to teach script. We never force people to say word for word the script. In fact, if you do, you're probably not that great of a closer. Yeah. If you, if you do. It's true. So talk about like struggle wise, we lose a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? So sales is naturally high churn. Um, so anybody who's led a sales team knows it's hard to keep people and it's hard to get people performing. What do you think the big mistake that people make when getting into sales? What is the thing that is killing most salespeople? Why do you think we lose the salespeople we do? You hit me with the good questions today. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, really, this is just an interview and review for, for Alex Nori. I just wanted to pick his brain. Over his no. <laughs> um, yeah, turnover is 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 real in the sales industry i i mean like i said I, I didn't have sales experience before this i started with reminder media in january of 2021 um and since i did like i've i've seen even before i was in leadership i've seen a lot of people uh come and go and i think the thing that that keeps people here because this is a tough job mm -hmm. um if you're a really good salesperson you think you're a really good salesperson apply at Reminder Media. We need really good salespeople. <laughs> yes. um, but before you do, this is a tough job. Like you're calling random strangers in the middle of the day, in the middle of their work day, whether they're, you know, a real estate agent, financial advisor, a plumber, landscape, whatever it is. And you're basically saying, hey, if you give me five minutes, I'll, I'll change your life when it comes to marketing. And they need to believe that. One of the things that I think we see a lot of drop off is by the end of 30, 60, 90 days, maybe six months, the caller doesn't believe it. Yeah. And it, the second that the caller doesn't believe it, or I mean, in any sales organization, whether you're a caller, a team lead, uh, a, a trainer, a VP, a, a president, a CEO, right? The moment you don't believe in what you're doing, mm. you're gonna stop. Bingo. And that's not a not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Not losing belief in something. I actually I, I don't do many interviews anymore. When I did interviews, one of my favorite thing, one of my favorite questions to ask people was, hey, what's something you used to believe in and don't anymore? Wow. Because one, most people have not heard that question before. They're like, wait a minute, what? And it's it's a good like kind of knock somebody on their yeah. on, on their heels question. But also you'd be mind blown. I, I, I interviewed a guy once and I asked him that question and it was weird without hesitation. He said, God. Like without hesitation, and I was like, "Wow!" And we we had a little conversation about it, and, and it, it did anyone say flat Earth? Uh, flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, I don't know or if I would have hired. Or worse. Uh, well, I guess if they didn't, 
<laughs> yeah, a globe. That would be a lot worse. Um, but one thing to me is, it, is if you – the second you run out of that belief, right, it's okay – Mm-hmm. But you have to identify it immediately and find something that you believe in or yeah. figure out why you don't believe in it anymore and, and find that belief again. But I think t- turnover in sales m- mainly just comes from belief. Yeah, no, I would agree. I, I often give the analogy of it's like when you get a nick in your windshield. Yeah. If you don't fix that nick, what happens to it? It starts to spread and yeah. a crack starts to come up from it. And so if you have a lack of belief in what you're doing mm. and the reason why you're doing it, you have a crack in your foundation. And if you don't fix that, it will spread. And slowly over time, you'll end up caving in because you don't have that belief. And I would put a little bit of a spin on this saying, it's not that people oftentimes don't believe in the product that they're selling, what it is, is they don't believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Mm. Mm. And what I've seen over the years with people is exactly what you're saying is that they look at it and they go, I maybe can do this, but the amount of work it takes me to do it. And that's might be where you find yourself today listening to this. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can do real estate or finance or whatever, but the amount of cold calls it takes to actually be successful or reaching out to clients or whatever your prospecting activity is. You go, man, the juice isn't worth the squeeze to you. So the million dollar question is, how do you get belief? How do you get belief in something? And I love to get your take on this. It's like, how would you get belief if you're going to work for a company, if you're getting into an industry, how do you get belief in what you are selling and what you're doing? Like, from a from like a my perspective, how do I get somebody to believe in what well, we do? Well, even for yeah, like what recommendation would you give to people of how to influence their belief? Yeah, um, actually, I, I brought camp up a couple times, but I mean, shout out to Mike Campanella if you watch. Yeah, this. he's our VP of sales for uh, those listening. You can go back and see Mike's interview from like yeah, four Mike's years interview ago. is one of my favorite. Actually, it's the first episode <laughs> yeah. I saw. Of That's Saint awesome. Payton, yeah. um, years ago, but um, he actually had a quote in our in our meeting yesterday. That, that pertains to this, I think. And it's, no one's ever going to remember your words. No one's ever going to remember your actions, but they're going to remember how you make them feel, mm-hmm. right? And I think when it comes to getting somebody to believe in something is you have to associate for them what you're trying to get them to believe in and whatever makes them feel good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't mean like, you know, material-wise, Right. Um, I mean, like if I'm, if I'm inspiring somebody, if I, if I'm getting somebody to believe in, in what we do, right. And, and we connect people with their top clients to help them drive in a referral repeat business. Right. And I'm getting them to believe in the way that we do it. Um, I take a moment and I'll, I'll ask them what makes them happiest in the world, like a hobby. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, you know, what, what's your favorite hobby? Someone might say, you know, um, I've gotten, um, playing softball before. My one of the guys I trained was in a beer league softball. And I said, great, why does it make you happy? So he starts explaining it. Oh, man, I got two kids. I, I get away for like a couple hours on a Sunday. <laughs> I can, I can I uh, get, you know what I'm saying? camaraderie with right. this guy. No. <laughs> um, and, and it was almost like everything melted. He was just like, oh, man, let me tell you. No. And everything <laughs> did. And he, and he just sat there and talked to me for like 15 minutes about how yeah. awesome playing softball is. I said, hey, man. The way that you talk to me about softball, Mm -hmm. right, is the way I need you to pitch what we do Mm -hmm. until you believe it. I wonder if you're connecting the Mylan. Building Mylan. Talent code. Stay paid episode talent code. Connecting basically what people are doing naturally, what they feel, what they believe in, to what they're trying to learn. Exactly. And connecting those feelings. That's super powerful. I never heard you say that before. So that's super I was saving it for this interview for two years, Luke. (laughs) Well, you passed, man. It's like, it is. You passed the review. Because um, purpose, right, is ultimately, like, you got to tie what people are going for, where they want to, like imagine at point A to point B, whatever they're trying to get to, what are they trying to achieve? What's their purpose? It can be high level purpose, like almost altruistic um, type based, or it can be all the way down to, I just want to buy a home Mm. or I want to put my kid through college or whatever it is, but you got to tie it to purpose. And then you go, how does the vehicle of what you are delivering uh, help someone achieve 
that purpose, mm. right? And it's like that ultimately is when I say like the juice isn't worth the squeeze for people. And when I hear people giving up or something like that, I go, ah, they don't see this vehicle, this, whether it's reminder media, our sales gig, whether it's um, your client prospect that you're trying to sell to get them in the home or invest in this portfolio, they don't see the vehicle that you're offering as a way for them yeah. to get to from point A to point B, which is ultimately what they want. So they lose belief. And then I give people like practically, you maybe heard me say this before, is I think for all of you like who are training people to try to believe in a product they're selling or try to believe in, in a process that they're doing, like I think the two ways you get belief ultimately is one is you, you believe in things because of the testimony that came before it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we sit down on these chairs knowing these chairs will hold us up. Um, and maybe it's a dumb analogy, but we do it because we've seen chairs hold people up. We've seen these chairs hold people up before. So yeah. every day you're using faith, you're using belief in things because of the testimony that came before. Mm -hmm. So where is your testimony? If you want to influence people's belief, what's your testimony? What's your testimony of clients that you've helped? If you're trying to influence other prospects, what's your testimony for salespeople that have made it? Like one thing we love to say is after your first year in business, what you're making well over six figures with us in mm -hmm. sales. Our top people are making 300 plus thousand, right? And it's like, that's a testimony yeah. of going, hey, if that's what you want to believe, if that's what you want to get, we have testimony of, of getting there. And that testimony can influence your belief. And then the second thing is preparation and understanding, like knowledge of your subject matter. A lot of times people have a lack of belief because they have a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But when you get an altitude on a subject matter, you get like confident. Yeah. And, and it's like you have so much confidence in sales. It oozes from you. Because you have a lot of knowledge on the subject matter. So your belief is so strong because of your experience and your knowledge. Yeah. And it's so, it's like, if you are doubting yourself in real estate and you just got in or doubting yourself in insurance, whatever business you're in, it's like, that's understandable because you have very little knowledge. You want to influence your, your confidence? Go get a lot of knowledge. Go actually study. Go read a lot of books. Go practice. This is why Grant Cardone says frequency creates greatness. You know, as you break down the muscle, as you go over and over and over again, you just build it stronger and you have that belief. So it's like, to me, what I see in people is that they're just freaking lazy yeah. and they don't apply themselves. And it drives me up a wall, as everybody knows. You sound but they like don't an, apply an, old, an old dad in a movie. You gotta yeah, exactly. apply yourself. Yeah, You're not applying on, yourself. Yeah, come on, you punks. This is a wonder no, years. But, um, <laughs> but that's truly like, and, and when push comes to shove, that's really what it comes down to. And so bringing it full circle back to what you said, I think is so powerful because what you do, you're doing that's so good, which is what I'm not doing, is I'm telling people, apply yourself. You're going, let me connect you with the feeling mm. that you have with softball or whatever it is that that relief, like you literally described just an emotion, that feeling that someone has, and then you tie it yeah. for them, which I think triggers in the brain yeah. so much better for people. Powerful stuff, man. Thank you, Alex, for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Dude, Appreciate it. Make fun. sure uh, if you want to join Alex's team, go to careers.remindermedia.com. Yeah. Come on. We'll have some fun. Come yeah. on. Let's join the sales Seriously. team. If you want to learn how to cold call, if you want to learn how to be an assassin in sales, you got to join this team. It's true, true sales. Absolutely. It's a good time. Thanks again, Alex. And thank you all so much for listening. You can dive deeper into this episode, get the show notes along with the video over at staypaidpodcast.com. And if you like this episode and want to show your support, uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Drop us a review uh, along with a five-star rating. We'll read here on the show. And the best way to show your support is to simply share this episode with a friend. If you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can follow our journey on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acre. Alex, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks Absolutely killed it. We're going to have to have you back and even maybe talk about sales techniques, like yeah. overcoming objections and stuff. This guy's a master at it. Here is my application for you today. So if you're in sales, right, or you're training salespeople, I think Alex hinted at something that's really, really powerful. Do you understand the way you learn? Do you understand what actually works best for you? You just heard me just do a whole thing on, hey, how do you influence your belief? You get knowledge. Well, how do you get knowledge? You have to go learn, right? So do you understand the way you learn? Are you a visual learner? Are you an audio learner, right? Are you an implementation learner? And more importantly, your team members, do you understand the way they learn? And one of the most powerful things we do here at Reminder Media is a personality test for people so we can understand who this person is, not only to place them in the right job, but it is very effective from a management tool to be able to know how to speak to this person. So you got to understand the way 
way you learn. Take action on that. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single industry. It's top producers take action. Take action on that today. 